Hey y'all, so today we are looking at the VFX graph inside of Unity. For those of you that have used the older particle system in Unity uh, Shuriken, this is more or less the new way of doing things is creating this VFX graph, which then allows you to get in and through a node-based system, start to edit and change what you're working with. So I will go ahead and jump right in. Basically inside of HDRP to start, I went ahead and did file, new scene, and created one basic indoors HDRP scene. What I wanna do from here is right click, create, go into visual effects and go into visual effect graph. Now I'm not going to use one of these templates just for the sake of explaining what we're doing and why we're doing it, but I will go ahead and open one of these just so you can see what it looks like. So let's do firework. We'll go ahead and make that, open it up by double clicking. And you can see that once you've created one of these templates, it has a bunch of stuff made for you. So we have a spawn, we have initialize particle, we have update particle, we have output particle unlit. And then somewhere in here, we have a GPU event that's a trigger on die. So when this particle dies, it will then spawn another particle initialization update, and then output. I've gone through much of this at length in a VFX rain course that I'll put up in the corner above me. If you want to check out how to make some rain particles with some, some pops at the bottom of the rain when it hits the ground, check that out. All right, so now that we've looked at firework, let's go ahead and create our own new effect. So I'm going to go to create. Let's come down here to visual effects and go into visual effect graph. From here, you have a bunch of templates, as we've mentioned, one of them being the firework that we just looked at together. Instead of using an empty VFX graph, I'm going to use the minimal system. I don't really have many occasions where I would recommend that you start with a completely empty graph. Uh, the minimal system essentially gives you the pre-wired contexts for spawn, initialize, update, and output. So let's take a look. We'll call this demo. And if I double click it, you can see over here on the right that we have our spawn system, initialize particle, update particle, and output. So as of right now, pretty much nothing is going to happen. I'm going to drag demo out here. I'm gonna drag it up here. And we have more or less nothing. Looking at all of this, I see that there is nothing that's spawning. So I want to come up here and I want to do a constant spawn rate. So I've hit space to search. I've double clicked on it to actually spawn it. And now what we're looking at is a textureless quad that is being spawned at a rate of 10 with a capacity of 64. So let's go ahead and give it a texture. I'm just gonna do a hard texture you can also create attributes over here that you can edit externally. Um, so let me go ahead and create the texture and then we'll take a look at that. So here is this default particle texture that I've created by clicking on the circle and clicking default particle. Uh, it doesn't look exactly right with the blend mode. So I'm going to change this over to additive, which looks better for me. So the next thing that we want to do is be able to at least see this particle moving, which needs to happen either an update or initialize particle. And I just want to set an initial velocity. So I want to go ahead and create that within initialize particle. So I'm going to say velocity set. And let's just say we want it to go up by one. So now we have this particle moving up by one, the spawn rate currently set to 10. Uh, you'll notice that it runs out after it's hit its capacity spawning at a rate of 10. So if we reset either of these, it'll restart the sim. There we go. And now what else do we want to see? Now we want to look at how to control a property externally. So if I come over here, I can either within all hit the plus sign and go into property or attribute, or if I have property or attribute selected here in the menu, and then I hit plus, it's going to show me anything that's already within that. So right now I'm only looking at properties. So I'm going to do int 
And you can see that I already created a spawn rate up here, but let's say spawn rate two. I can drag spawn rate two out here and I can drag this variable over to rate. So now rate is gray. We don't know what it is. It's being overridden by an exposed variable of spawn rate two. So let me go ahead and hit S or control S to save. So you can now see that I have spawn rate one and spawn rate two. I'm gonna go ahead and delete out my spawn rate that I already had just so that it's not causing confusion. And having done that and saved, you can see that all I have is spawn rate two. So now what I want to do is go ahead and change the value to let's say five. And I'm changing that value from here in the front end in the inspector, which is then changing this property value, which is then driving this rate in the spawn system. So that's how you will open up properties for people to edit very specific pieces of your particle system that you would like for them to edit without giving them control to accidentally turn the capacity to 500 million, which could crash the project. So that's the idea. Now that we've figured that out, I'm going to turn the capacity up to 500. And now we can just see that nicely spawning at a spawn rate of 5. And in the output particle unlit quad, I could now come down here and hit space and do a color over lifetime. And now that we have that, you can see something pretty interesting happening over here on the left, which is a fade out, and it looks like a, a brief fade in. The reason that that works is because our sample mode is over life, and our color mode is both color and alpha. So it is, in fact, blending just by default into and out of the color. So I'm going to leave that blending in for now of the alphas. If you wanted to adjust it, you could do so up here at these top toggles. In the bottom left, I want to change this over to a bright red. And I want to make this a little bit emissive. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this up. And on the right color, I want to turn this into a bright blue. And I also want to make that a bit emissive. So let's do it. So now we have red blending into blue. And that's all being done in the render of the particle. Now what we still have left that we haven't really done much with is update particle. And perhaps before I start into that, let's do one more thing just to make this interesting. We will create one more set position here in initialize particle. So we'll add one more thing here. And now I've actually made the initial position a sphere. And you can, from in here, do a random spawn. You can do position. Do you want it to be from the surface, from the volume? And you can change up the shape itself. So now I've changed it up a little bit. We'll just leave it where it's at. So now we can see that we're getting a bit of a difference in where things are emitting from because it has this whole sphere to draw a, uh, a location, a position from. So now that we have that, and it's a little bit interesting, Let's turn up our spawn rate, which we can do here into 10. Turn our capacity to 5,000. Uh, and maybe let's turn our spawn rate up even higher to 50. It's looking kind of interesting now. Now this is where you want to start using update particle uh, for something like a force. So let's say I want to add in some turbulence. I can now double click turbulence. And you can see now there's a little bit of turbulence. If I want to increase that to two, might start looking a bit more like a, one of those popping ball machines or like some fireflies maybe flying around. I'm going to increase the drag to five. So that now things are going a little bit everywhere. And now we can just play with our settings and see what feels good. Now the other thing that I want to do here, I can scale myself back up a little bit, is that I want to have this kind of target the rough shape of the sphere. So even though there's turbulence, even though there's upward velocity, we want to have it roughly keep the shape of a sphere. So I'm going to hit spacebar here and update, and I'm going to go to attractor shape. This is also within force. 
And now you can see there's turbulence, but the sphere is still here. And we're still trying to make sure that things are drawn to it. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to increase our spawn rate to 500. I'm going to increase our capacity to 50,000. All right, so this is starting to look really cool. I do want to come down here and change this blue back to something in the red spectrum because I feel like the blue just it looks a little too silly. And now we can get into reds and oranges as if it's uh, somehow turning ember or there's some sort of spark or embers happening around this effect. Uh, one thing that you can see here is as I rotate the camera, things get kind of thin. So what I do want to do is hit space down here and make sure that I have a, I just typed in camera. I want to face the camera. Uh, orient face camera position. And now no matter what, they're always looking at the camera. So you don't have that weird fade as things kind of, as you go to the side of the quad, if that makes sense. Okay, so we have now walked through how to spawn, how to create a public property or variable that you can have your designer iterate on here. We can have the initialized particles do things like set velocity, set position. We have the update particles that can come in and set turbulence and do things like attractor shape. So things that you want to be happening to the particles once they're in the scene. And then you have the basically the render section that is the output particle. So from here, we could go in here and add in things like math. Uh, if we wanted to create a node and say divide, do some arithmetic in here to start driving some of these things. You can also come in and do a, a uh, something like a texture. So if you wanted a texture 2D, if you wanted a texture 3D, um, you can create those as exposed properties as well that you can start to allow your designers to iterate on. If you wanted to add in a whole other particle system that lives within this VFX graph, you could come over here, create a node for spawn. There's a lot of extensibility from here. This video is just to get you the spawn, initialize particle, update particle, and output particle system, and look at how all of that works together. Hopefully this is helpful. Please let me know if you all wanna see future parts of this or look at any types of specific effects that you wanna see how to accomplish. Happy to go through any of that with you in a future tutorial. I hope this was helpful. Hope you're having a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.